spheres that directly collide with each other are spheres that follow a path that is a straight line connecting the centers of the two spheres. Now I'm showing the speeds of the two spheres in this picture. Now for the speed I could just write UA without an arrow but we know that that can be a source of confusion in for linear motion because for linear motion a letter without an arrow often refers to a velocity. A velocity could be positive or negative but I want to emphasize that I'm using the speed here so the speed is always a positive quantity so in particular the speed of B is 2 meters per second although if we take directions to the right as positive the velocity of B is actually minus 2 meters per second because B is moving to the left okay so what I want to do here is compare the approaching speed of the two spheres to the receding speed of the two spheres after they've collided so to get the approaching speed we get the relative speed of one sphere with respect to the other sphere before the collision. Now it doesn't actually matter which sphere we choose. I've chosen the speed of B relative to A. So we imagine a coordinate system fixed to sphere A and we want to see what uh, sphere B's speed looks like from the point of view of A. That's going to be a measure of how quickly the gap between the spheres decreases. So at what rate does the distance between the sphere decrease? That's the approaching speed. And it should be clear that that's just the sum of these speeds. 2 and 1 is 3. But let's just formally go through it here. You know, here's our relative velocity vector. This is the velocity of B relative to A. We know from relative velocity that that's UB minus UA. So we calculate UB minus UA. UB is minus 2. Then we, we subtract UA, which is 1, to get minus 3. So minus 3 meters per second is the relative velocity of B with respect to A, but we want its magnitude. So we get the relative speed. That's plus 3 meters per second. Of course, if I calculated this thing here, it would just involve a change of sign. So either UABA or UAB will give us the relative speed. We just have to take the magnitude. Okay, so it means that the distance between the two spheres decreases at a rate of 3 meters each second. Now let's look at the situation immediately after the collision. So here are the speeds. The speeds have decreased as you can see. By the way, these spheres will continue with the same velocity forever unless an external force acts on them. So I'm assuming here that there are no external forces. So you could imagine in the first picture that these two spheres are in outer space, for example, and uh, say sphere A has speed one meter per second. Well, it'll continue with that speed forever in a straight line if no forces act. That's just Newton's first law. Now, it doesn't actually have to be in outer space. We could imagine these two spheres on a perfectly smooth surface. So surface is near the surface of the earth so gravity acts on this sphere so there is a force on it vertically down but of course that's counterbalanced by an equal but opposite force contact force on the sphere due to the table or whatever the sphere is on okay so these two forces sum to zero so the result so there's no resultant force on the sphere because we're assuming that there's no friction so there's nothing pushing back on the sphere the sphere doesn't even roll because we don't have any friction. The sphere literally slips along the table. So it would continue with this speed forever until it collides with some barrier or the second sphere. Now let's consider the speed with which the spheres recede from each other. So that's the rate at which the distance between the spheres increases. So we could calculate the relative velocity of A with respect to B or of B with respect to A. I'll do VA, B. So that's VA minus VB. Now we want the relative speed so we'll get the magnitude. So VA now is pointing to the left. So the velocity of sphere A is a half. And we have to subtract the velocity of sphere B. Well, that's plus 1 because it's moving to the right. 
so we get the magnitude of minus 3 halves or 1.5 meters per second. Now let's imagine that we double these initial speeds. Well what's going to happen to the approaching speed? Well it, it will double you know so if you plug in the numbers Um, we have minus 4, minus 2, which is minus 6. So we get 6 meters per second. And experiment shows that if we double the approaching speed, uh, we actually double the receding speed. So the approaching speed is proportional to the receding speed. It's the same if we triple the approaching speed. The receding speed will triple, and so on. So I'll just indicate that on the diagram. So now VA is minus 1, um, VB is 2, so we get the magnitude of minus 3, or 3 meters per second. So we can see that the approaching speed is always twice the receding speed. And, you know, we could imagine tripling, you know, we could imagine tripling this number even, to get 18. Well, we'd have to triple this number to get 9, and 18 divided by 9 is 2. So that the ratio of the speeds is constant. That's what experiment shows. So in words we can say that the receding speed is proportional to the approaching speed. So that means that the receding speed must equal a constant multiple of the approaching speed. So here we see the coefficient of restitution again. That depends on the materials that the spheres are made out of. Like before, in the previous video, E is a number that lies between 0 and 1. E could actually equal 0, but it can never equal 1. And like before, if E is 0, we have a perfectly inelastic collision. If E is 1, we have a perfectly elastic collision. An important point that I forgot to mention in the previous video is that this relation is independent of the masses of the spheres. I didn't mention anything about the spheres' masses. I could change the masses of the spheres and this relation would still hold. Okay, so if I go back up here, I could leave the approaching speed as it is, I could leave these velocities as they are and change the masses of the spheres. What would happen is that the receding speed would still be the same, but these speeds would be different. Okay, but if we take the difference of them, you know, in here when we're calculating the receding speed, we would find that the receding speed stays the same. So that the ratio of approaching speed to receding speed is constant. So the ratio of VAB to UAB is always a constant, and it's equal to this fixed number E that just depends on the materials that the spheres are made of. So now let's look at extreme values of E. Let's start with the situation where E is equal to zero. Okay, so the right-hand side is going to be zero. So we have the magnitude of the receding speed is zero. But that's just the magnitude of VA minus VB. Which means that VA equals VB. So what does this relation tell us? So I'll draw a rough sketch here. So we have two spheres approaching each other. It doesn't matter what the masses are. They're approaching each other directly. They collide. And we are given that the receding speed is zero when E is zero. So the speed at which they recede from each other, that's what I mean by receding speed, is zero. So if it's zero, it means the distance between them never changes. Okay, well, the, the velocities are the same. So both spheres move at the same velocity, so the two spheres must stick together or coalesce. So, um, you know, they could stick together and stay where they are. In that case, 
these velocities are zero, or they could both move together to the right, or of course they could both move together with the same, well they have to move at the same speed because they're stuck together, they could move to the left. So let's see that in the simulation, that the masses of these spheres can be anything we like. The values are shown here, but I can change those. The elasticity is shown, shown here, ranges from 0 to 100%. So these spheres collect, uh, collide directly, and as you can see, they're moving together with the same speed. Now the other extreme is when E is equal to 1, and we refer to that as a perfectly elastic collision. So the receding sp uh, speed of the spheres is equal to the approaching speed of the spheres. Okay, so we leave this initial situation as it is. E is 1, and let's consider a final situation. So, that, you know, the, the speeds don't have to be what I've indicated here. The, these values could be different, but the important thing is, is that the receding speed is equal to 6. It must equal this number. So the approaching speed must equal the receding speed, when E is equal to 1. Now these actual values differ depending on what the masses of the spheres are, okay? Like it's possible that, you know, this one could be 4, but if this is 4, this one would have to be 2, so that we end up with a receding speed equal to the approaching speed. Of course, E is never equal to 1, as I explained in a previous video. Um, a certain amount of energy goes into the collision of the two spheres. So, the receding speed is usually less than the approaching speed. So, you know, since E is less than 1, you, you know, we're taking a number that's less than 1 and multiplying it by the approaching speed. We find that the receding speed is less than the approaching speed because there's a loss of energy in the collision. And I'll do a separate video on energy consideration, so I'll leave that for now. Now, let's get our vector equation that corresponds to, to this relation here. So let's take this example again. So we look at the velocities now, not the speeds. So now we'll take the velocity of B relative to A. We see that it's minus 6 because B appears to be moving towards the left from the point of view of A. Okay, and we were taking directions to the right as positive, so the velocity of B relative to A is negative. Let's look at the situation after collision. Now, I, I actually had the speed of A relative to B calculated here. I meant to actually use the speed of B relative to A to be consistent with what I had up here, but it doesn't actually matter because um, vector VBA is equal but opposite to vector minus VBA. A. Ops equal in the sense that the magnitudes are the same, so we'd still get the same answer. So it doesn't actually matter. But to make things easier, because we're talking about velocities, I will change it to VBA. So again, we imagine our coordinate system attached to sphere A, and now the spheres are receding. So what will B's velocity look like? Well, it's pretty clear that B is moving to the right, so its velocity is going to be positive. And that's how it works out, of course. We get plus 6. Okay, we're only interested in the signs here. Now the numbers happen to be the same because we're dealing with a perfectly elastic collision here with E equal to 1, but in general, of course, E is not, well, E is never 1, actually. What matters is the sign change. The signs are opposite each other. So that's an important consideration for the relative velocity before collision and the relative velocity after collision.
So to indicate that VAB is opposite in direction to UAB, we have to stick in this minus sign here, because E is a positive number. So VAB is a negative scalar multiple of vector UAB. Of course, we can also write this as VA minus VB equals minus E times UA minus UB.